On June 1st, 2010, Charity Navigator named Pittsburgh the most charity-conscious metro area in the nation. Pittsburgh is home to one of the country's most active and successful foundation communities, supporting hundreds of top-notch local nonprofits. But this is nothing new. The great accumulation of wealth amassed in Pittsburgh in the early 20th century led its wealthiest citizens to give back generously. This set a standard of philanthropy for the community that continues to this day. There are many famous names associated with the early years of Pittsburgh philanthropy. Perhaps the most well-known are those of Andrew Carnegie, Henry Clay Frick, and H.J. Hines. Each of these men left behind a great legacy. And it would be hard to walk two blocks in Pittsburgh without seeing something that one of them was responsible for. Every Pittsburgher is familiar with those names, but how recognizable are their faces to the average person? And how much do people know about their legacy in this region? There's one way to find out. Let's go to Pittsburgh Strip District and quiz some folks. So I'm gonna hold up a picture and I would love you to tell me who you think this gentleman is. <laughs> That's Andrew Carnegie. Oh, wait, say that again, Andrew really? Andrew Carnegie. No, oh, okay. So you brought her along to help, didn't you? No, I mean, she's my lifeline. Westinghouse? No. Well, that, uh, that's a big name of the... Big name of the time, yeah, but no. Is that Carnegie? It is. Oh. It is. He looks familiar. <laughs> he would be glad that you said that. <laughs> I, I don't know it. Oh. Library named after him? Oh, Carnegie. Yes, yeah, you're right, you're so excited, okay. I got it. <laughs> Andrew Carnegie. Andrew Carnegie, he wins a prize, very good. We probably know that one. Who is it? Andrew Carnegie. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad. It seems like a lot of people know who Andrew Carnegie was, but I think we should go a little deeper into the background of this great man. Carnegie was one of the first people to state that the rich have a moral obligation to give away their wealth. In his 1889 Gospel of Wealth, he espoused a doctrine of responsible giving. To die rich is to die disgraced, he said, and he did his best to give away most of his wealth. Everyone knows that the Carnegie Library System is named for him, but they may not know that he gave the city of Pittsburgh $1 million to build and equip the main library and five branches. He also founded Carnegie Technical Schools, which eventually became Carnegie Mellon University. During his lifetime, he gave away approximately $400 million, $10 billion in today's dollars, and his fortune is responsible for building close to 3,000 libraries. The private foundation, Carnegie Corporation of New York, has awarded more than $1 billion in grants since 1911. Pretty amazing stuff. Now, I wonder what Pittsburghers know about Henry Clay Frick. Let's take a look. Okay, here we are. This I'm going to show you a photo. Tell me who you think this gentleman is. Okay. Uh, Henry Clay Frick. Oh, uh, no, but close. Okay. It, it, it starts with an H. Hines. Oh. Uh, no, no, this was Henry Clay Frick. <laughs> Mellon? Uh, well, we're more. Melon's a big name. Melon is a big name. This is an, uh, another big name. We have a park named after him here, um, art museum. Is that Henry Clay Frick? Henry, say, say that again. Henry Clay Frick. Yeah. Were you watching when the other folks gave the answer? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. No, I don't know. Not, not a, a guess? Any? No, I'm sorry. Um, how about Henry? Henry Clay Frick. Oh, yeah, I went to his house. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, interesting answers. Apparently, Henry Clay Frick isn't the most recognizable of people, but that doesn't mean he wasn't important to Pittsburgh. Frick left 80% of his fortune for the public's benefit. His legacy includes the 151-acre Frick Park, and he left $2 million, $50 million in today's dollars, to help maintain it. Henry Clay Frick built many of the city's greatest buildings, the architecture that even today gives Pittsburgh much of its architectural character and style. Among those buildings are the William Penn Hotel, the Union Trust Building, and the Frick Building. 
He gave $5 million each to Harvard, MIT, and the Educational Commission of Pittsburgh, and donated to Mercy Hospital, as well as hospitals in the Coke and Steel regions of Connellsville, Mount Pleasant, Braddock, Greensburg, and Homestead. And he left his daughter, Helen Clay Frick, an additional $6.5 million for charitable and educational purposes. That led to the construction of the University of Pittsburgh's Frick Fine Arts Building, and after Helen's death, the Frick Art and Historical Center. What a significant and visible impact on the region. Now let's see how recognizable H.J. Hines is to Pittsburghers today. I got nothing. You got nothing? Yeah. Do you have something? I'm just sticking his beard. <laughs> You're a little overwhelmed by the that's, facial hair. That's what I wanted I like to do. It. I don't know. <laughs> Looks like President Taft. I have no idea. <laughs> is it the facial hair? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's probably the, probably the facial hair. I have no clue. <laughs> no. <laughs> probably a, a guy who was a, a peer of Carnegie's. Think uh, Pickles. Hi. <laughs> wow. And this, this is kind of Pittsburgh history stuff. Okay. So. Uh, Mr. Hines. Nicely done. How did you know that? It, is it? Yeah. Really? No, yeah, I'm not playing. <laughs> uh, the Heinz, I'm assuming Heinz. Yeah, yeah there you go. That's the See? Yeah, you. And you were worried that you wouldn't know. Hmm, a mixed bag on H.J. Heinz. Maybe it's the out of control mutton chop sideburns that threw people off. H.J. Heinz, like Carnegie and Frick, left our region a rich legacy. He founded his business with the idea that doing a common thing uncommonly well was the way to success. It was his philosophy that heart power is better than horsepower, and his tremendous philanthropy proved the power of his words. Perhaps his greatest gift to Pittsburgh was the philosophy of giving back that inspires the Heinz Endowments today. The Heinz family legacy of philanthropy established many notable Pittsburgh institutions, including the Sarah Heinz House, the Heinz Memorial Chapel at the University of Pittsburgh, Heinz Gallery, and Heinz Hall, the home of the Pittsburgh Symphony. Pittsburgh's second largest philanthropy is the Heinz Endowments, currently chaired by Teresa Heinz. And of course, the Senator John Heinz History Center is Pennsylvania's largest history museum and an affiliate of the Smithsonian Institution. There's obviously so much more to H.J. Heinz's legacy than ketchup, but it's hard to blame people for thinking of that iconic bottle that's on so many dinner tables throughout the world. So when you think of Pittsburgh, don't just think of sports teams and sandwiches with fries on them. Think of the amazing history of philanthropy that is alive and well in this great city. On June 21st, 1960, the National Society of Fundraisers was chartered by the state of New York. The name was changed to the Association of Fundraising Professionals in 2000. For over 50 years, the organization has been working to advance ethical and effective fundraising and to support charities around the world that provide important services to their communities. AFP has 213 chapters and over 30,000 members throughout the world. In 1980, when the Western Pennsylvania chapter of AFP was chartered, there were 22 paid members. There are now over 300 members in the chapter. We're proud to live in a region with such a rich tradition of philanthropy. We're proud of our dedicated members, and we're excited to see what the next 30 years of philanthropy will bring for Western Pennsylvania and the numerous communities around the world that we serve.